You know, one of the elements that makes Idaho the envy of other states is, is Statecom. And one of the things that Statecom does is have the ability to pull a number of stakeholders together and get them all on a bridge call to deal with whatever the issue is, whether it's hazmat or whether it's another public health issue. Um, and so we think of the, the Ghostbusters saying of, you know, who are you going to call? And in Idaho, when we have anybody that's dealing with um, disasters or large-scale emergencies, you ask them, so if you're faced with this situation, who are you going to call? And typically, nine times out of ten, their answer is going to be STACOM. In June of this last year, in 2017, the Division of Public Health, which is part of the Department of Health and Welfare, received national accreditation through the, the National Public Health Accreditation Board. And part of the exciting part about that is that the division was really doing a great job of demonstrating um, our commitment to continuous quality improvement, our commitment towards um, providing uh, best practices across the whole agency, and also helping us um, guide ourselves along our contributions towards the Department of Health and Welfare strategic plan, which is to promote and protect the safe health and safety of Idahoans. What a benefit it is for the citizens of Idaho and the Idaho State Police to partner with such dedicated professionals. I recall as a young trooper, years and years ago, over 20 years ago, doing a uh, conference call on a hazardous material situation, and it was so comforting to know that I'm the person out there in the field listening and, and knows what's going on, and yet clear back here in Boise, there are there's somebody dedicated right there that's getting all the stakeholders involved so that we can all have this conference call and this talk about what the best way is to serve the citizens of Idaho in this emergency. That's what I believe State Comm brings, not just to the state police, not just to law enforcement and not just to emergency providers, but to every citizen in Idaho. The Office of Emergency Management and before that the Bureau of Homeland Security benefited with a partnership based on a nationwide recognized best practice and hazmat response. Um, so having the ability to get a lot of people in the same room to listen to the same information as expeditious as possible has benefited the state of Idaho and the recognition we've received for the HAZMAT program that we have throughout the nation. StateCom gives us an incredible capability to communicate not only with our regional health care coalition partners, but also to pull in other subject matter experts as necessary during a large scale incident. The state HAZMAT plan is, is built around um, uh, working with StateCom. And, uh, and has become a best practice throughout the throughout the country um, for creating a, a common operating picture for multiple agencies at the, the local, state, and federal level. So uh, that is unique in the in the country. We've been working with Statecom and improving our ability to respond to those kinds of large spills. And I think if it weren't for Statecom and their ability to bring large groups of interested parties together that can all bring something to a large spill. Uh, we wouldn't have nearly the capability that we have today. 2014 with the Ebola scare in the United States was a critical time for interacting with state comments. One of those areas that really demonstrated the value of the process where if you get a person under investigation, we can have the hospital, we can have the civil support team, we can have state EPI, we can have CDC, we can have the laboratory all sitting down collectively making decisions. Um, and that, that, that's a model that's unique. We had similar situations over the last few summers dealing with plague and rodents and pets uh, in the summer. Uh, remarkably same idea, except this was real. This wasn't just a you know, we're planning and making, uh, putting efforts in place that if we get somebody who may be potentially exposed to Ebola, here's what we would do. In, in this instance, it was, we've got to get messaging out to folks in southwest Idaho to be on the lookout for dead rodents and, and pets that may be coming in contact with them. At the laboratory, we're constantly working with rabies infected animals or potential rabies cases. And so it's amazing how after five o'clock, that's when the excitement starts, and we can always count on state comm to make sure that we get the information to the people that need it. Yeah. The biggest benefits uh, to having state communication center, from my perspective, is that not only are they able to get hold of anybody <laughs> that I need to talk to quickly, 
Um, they often have secondary phone numbers for these people that I may not know. Uh, also, they can call multiple people at once, so I don't have to spend my time calling first person, explaining everything to them, and calling somebody else and filling them in. We can all talk together at the same time. The amount of time that saves is immeasurable uh, for us, and uh, I think it avoids a lot of mistakes uh, because when people pass messages down the row, uh, mistakes can get made, uh, misunderstandings, misinterpretations. This way we can all talk together at the same time. Um, and in my experience, uh, it's amazing how quickly uh, I'll call in for help and maybe in 10 minutes we're all on the phone together. It's just really uh, uh, remarkable how fast we can talk.